Hello, and welcome to the Blowgun Channel. My name is John, and together we'll be exploring the fascinating and challenging world of modern day blowgunning. In this series of videos, we'll be covering everything you need to know about blowguns. We'll be learning a little history, some anatomy and physiology, and maybe even doing a little physics and math. But don't worry, we'll keep that as painless as possible. In this video, Blowgun Basics, we'll be getting an introduction to what modern day blowgunning is all about, learning some basic techniques, and getting a brief introduction to the most commercially popular blowguns and blowgun darts currently available. Before we begin, you should know that blowguns are illegal in California, Massachusetts, the city of New York, and in our neighbor to the north, Canada. There may also be regional regulations affecting the use of blowguns, so make sure you stay on the right side of the law. You sure don't want your city or your state showing up on this map, so please shoot responsibly. Having originally been born and reared in South America, I was already well aware of the importance of the blowgun to the native peoples of that continent as well as neighboring Central America. In fact, to this day, blowguns are still used by the native peoples of those lands. However, I was surprised and a little bit jealous to discover that the blowgun was also invented independently in Malaysia. From there, it spread to the Philippines, Indonesia, and eventually Japan, where blowguns were actually used by ninjas. That's right, ninjas. How cool is that? And, if you keep your eyes open, you'll occasionally see a blowgun pop up in a martial arts movie, like the man with the iron fists. Ouch! It looked like that hurt. Of course, even if you're making your own martial arts movie, never point a blowgun at another person. I was also surprised to learn that blowguns were used by the Cherokee and Iroquois Native Americans much closer to home here in the eastern United States. While usually you see an invention like gunpowder developed in one location and then spread throughout the world, the blowgun is such a simple weapon it's easy to understand why it was developed in a number of different locations independently. In more recent history, the Hivro Blogan was popular in the 1960s and 70s, and you might remember seeing this ad in the backs of outdoors magazines like Field and Stream and Outdoor Life. In fact, my very first blowgun was a Hivro Blogan that I mail ordered in the mid-1970s, although I always felt sorry for the anteater in that advertisement. However, the Hivro Blowgun Company disappeared by the end of the 1980s. Fortunately, in the early 90s, a number of different blowgun manufacturers appeared, and today we have a wide selection of quality products available. Today, blowguns are commercially available in three sizes. 40 caliber, 50 caliber, and my personal favorite, the 625 caliber big bore magnum. Historically, traditional native blowguns were usually about 50 caliber, no matter where in the world you found them. But in today's world, the 40 caliber is by far the most common. If you picked up a blowgun in a department store or a fair or gun show, it was probably a 40 caliber. And that continues to be one of the most widespread calibers available today, although it's not the most efficient. 
Traditional native blowguns were often eight feet long or more, but modern blowguns come in much more manageable lengths, usually between two and five feet. Generally speaking, the longer your blowgun, the faster your dart velocity, and the flatter your dart trajectory, which are both very good things. This is because the longer the dart's in the barrel of the blowgun, the faster and faster the dart accelerates until it actually leaves the muscle. There's one exception to this longer equals faster rule for blowgun length, and that involves the 625 caliber big bore magnums, which require a considerable volume of air to shoot correctly. And we'll cover that issue in detail in the video covering the 625 big bores. A three to four foot, 40 or 50 caliber blowgun makes a nice little target or plinking gun that the entire family can enjoy shooting. I prefer somewhat longer blowgun lengths, four feet or more, but most of the blowguns that you see advertised and that you might come across in a store are probably going to be closer in length to three feet or less. Don't get additional length by buying a two-piece blowgun. The connector holding the two barrel halves together is not secure enough. A one-piece barrel is more stable and more accurate. Now let's take a brief look at some of the most popular blowguns and darts. We'll be taking a much more detailed look at blowgun brands and dart styles in the separate videos on the 40 and 50 caliber blowguns and on the 625 caliber big bore blowguns. But this will give us a brief snapshot of some of the most readily available and popular products. We'll be starting with the 40 and 50 caliber blowguns because they're so similar to each other. As we've already mentioned, the 40 caliber blowgun is the most popular and the most widespread, and there's a wide range of brands to choose from. Some of the most popular brands of 40 caliber blowguns include the Terminator and Bunker Buster series, and also the Avenger line of blowguns, which includes the Avenger Warrior and the Avenger Ninja. Unlike the 40 caliber blowguns, there's only a couple of brands of readily available 50 caliber blowguns, and those include the Amazon Commando and the Extreme series of blowguns. The Extreme series of blowguns includes the Extreme Ultra Pro and the Extreme Precision CT or Close Tolerance blowgun. The Extreme Precision CT has a slightly narrower barrel that hugs the dark cone a little bit better and gives improved accuracy. And there's many individuals that consider the Extreme Precision CT to be the most accurate commercially available blowgun. All of these different blowguns are available in a variety of lengths between two to four feet. And again, my personal preference is for somewhat longer blowguns in the three to four foot or even longer range if available. All of these blowguns will include at least a small selection of darts. Historically, small stones or clay pellets preceded the invention of sharpened wooden darts, which came later. And today we have a large variety of darts to choose from. The 40 and 50 caliber blowguns have the widest selection of available darts, although we'll only be looking at five of the most popular here. The 40 and 50 caliber darts themselves are very similar to each other. In fact, for most of these darts, the head or shaft of the dart is absolutely identical between 40 and 50 caliber. The only difference is whether you have a 40 caliber tail cone or a 50 caliber tail cone affixed to the back of the dart. As we begin looking at some individual dart styles, we'll start with the popular stun darts. The all plastic stun dart is available in only 40 caliber. The metal tipped super stun dart is available in both calibers. Neither one of these darts makes a good target dart because it doesn't stick well in the target backing. However, these darts are a blast to use against toy soldiers, aluminum cans, and other non-paper targets. The target dart is the standard blowgun dart. It's one of the most accurate darts available and is widely used in competition. Most blowguns will include a small selection of target darts 
and they're readily available. The spear dart is very similar to the target dart. It's a little bit longer and has a flared spear point. The spear dart is not quite as accurate as the target dart and will also wear out your target backing a little bit faster because that flared spear point makes a larger hole. The broadhead dart is also very popular, but don't let its popularity or its name fool you. This is not a hunting dart. And we'll look more closely at why in the video on blowgun hunting ballistics. This is not a very good target dart because it really tears up your target backing because of the large broadhead and for the same reason is very difficult to remove. This brings us to my personal favorites, the 625 caliber big bore blowguns. You'll remember that we said earlier that a longer blowgun provides faster velocity and a flatter dart trajectory. And this is usually true. The big bore blowguns are an exception to this rule. And for those with a little bit smaller lung capacity, such as female shooters or youth shooters, a shorter blowgun will do better than a longer blowgun when it comes to the big bores. Now, there's only one manufacturer of big bore blowguns, and that's Cold Steel. The choices are very straightforward. Their blowguns come in two lengths, either 4 feet or 5 feet. Each of their lengths is available in two different styles, either a standard magnum barrel or a heavy-duty pro barrel. And as you can see, the pro barrel is about twice as thick as the standard magnum barrel. The mouthpieces of the two blowguns are also different, and I actually prefer the slightly rounder, broader mouthpiece of the Pro Series blowgun. My two favorite blowguns are the 5-foot Magnum or Standard blowgun and the 4-foot Pro or Heavy Duty blowgun. Both of these blowguns are light enough for extended practice sessions, and they're both very nicely balanced. However, I found the 5 foot pro heavy duty blowgun to be just a little bit too heavy for extended shooting sessions. However, the 5 foot pro is an excellent choice for occasional shooting under very rugged conditions. For example, hunting in woods or mountainous terrain. There are fewer 625 caliber darts compared to the 40 and 50 caliber blowguns, but all of them are very interesting. We'll briefly cover the three most popular. The Mini Broadhead is an excellent all-around dart. It's similar to the 40 and 50 caliber spear dart with a flared spear tip, but a much heavier shaft. This dart serves well as a very accurate target dart and is great for plinking at tin cans and stuffed animals. This isn't quite a hunting dart, despite much of what you'll see online. The flared spear point is just not wide enough to cause enough tissue damage for a humane kill. For hunting, I recommend the razor tip broadhead dart, which we'll be covering in detail in the upcoming video on blowgun hunting ballistics. The bamboo dart is a fun novelty dart, and it's also very lightweight. For female and youth shooters that don't have the lung capacity of an adult male, this is the easiest 625 caliber dart to blow. It works as a casual target dart. And I say casual because the shafts on many of these darts are not straight. Also, this dart's lightweight makes it very easily diverted by wind. It's not a very accurate dart. However, it is fun for plinking at aluminum cans, for popping balloons, and for shooting at stuffed animals.
The 625 caliber stun dart is one of the most fun blowgun darts of all. It serves great as an all-around plinker, and it'll do a number on aluminum cans. This dart is actually heavy enough to work small caliber firearm spinner targets. When shooting this dart, I like to use a heavy blanket or a comforter as a backstop. This is also the only other commercially available dart besides the razor tip broadhead that I consider to be a legitimate hunting dart. There's also a wide variety of blowgun accessories available. As I mentioned, most blowguns come with darts and they often include a quiver for carrying those darts directly on the blowgun. As you can see, different kinds of quivers are needed for different calibers and different styles of darts. If your blowgun doesn't include quivers, you can buy them separately directly from the manufacturer or from third party vendors. However, despite what I'm showing you here, my personal preference is to minimize the number of accessories I put directly on my blowguns. For that reason, I like using a simple homemade quiver that clips on my belt. Many competition target shooters prefer a neck quiver. This one's a little fancy with a nice neck strap and a heavy duty quiver made from a paintball container but you can make a similar quiver with nothing more than string and an empty water bottle. One of my favorite blowgun accessories is an additional foam grip like this one right here. Not only does it make a blowgun more comfortable to hold, especially those narrow 40 and 50 caliber blowguns, but it also helps you position your hand exactly the same way for every shot. This gives you good consistency for good long-term accuracy. My years of shotgun and rifle shooting made me prefer a horizontal grip like this, but there are also vertical pistol grips available for blowguns. This simple grip is available for both 40 and 50 caliber blowguns. And this very nice vertical pistol grip is on the Primal Warrior blowgun. While I don't recommend the blowgun itself, this is the nicest vertical grip that I've seen for a blowgun yet, and it has some really nice Picatinny rails for mounting a variety of accessories. One of the most important accessories you can add to your blowgun to improve your shooting is a blowgun sight. Unfortunately, most of the commercially available sights simply don't work very well on blowguns. I'll be covering sights separately in a different video, but for now I'll just mention the different sight types and tell you which ones have worked well for me. This is one of the most popular blowgun sights and this is a front crosshair sight. This Primal Warrior actually has three different sight types on it. It has a front post sight, a green dot sight, and a laser sight. And I'll tell you that of all these different sight types that I just mentioned, the laser sight is the only one that I've found to be effective. Again, I'll be covering these in more detail in a separate video, and I'll also be introducing you to the other type besides the laser that's worked well for me. You can't buy it, but it's very economical, easy to make, and effective, and that is the blowgun card sight. So where can you get yourself some of this great gear? You might be lucky and find blowguns in your local Walmart or sporting goods store, but most blowgunning equipment is available online. I've got most of my blowgun gear from blowguns.net, also known as Target Zone Sports. They have an excellent selection, good prices, and great customer service. And they carry a number of products that you won't find anywhere else. They also don't carry some of the cheaper quality blowgun products that I don't recommend. Whether you're a beginning blowgunner or an expert, I've never been disappointed with anything that I've purchased from blowguns.net. I've also purchased blowgun product from jungleblowgun.com, but unfortunately their website has been listed as down for a number of months now. And of course there's amazon.com. However, there's so much product at Amazon, you really need to know what you're buying before you order it. 
and I don't recommend purchasing from Amazon unless you're fairly familiar with the product and know exactly what you're getting. Now we're ready to shoot, but safety always comes first and all basic gun safety rules apply here, including never point your weapon at another person or pet and never keep your weapon loaded when you're not actually shooting it. There's also a couple of specific safety rules that apply to blowguns. First of all, never inhale into your blowgun. Most blowguns include an anti-inhale mouthpiece, but don't depend on that for your personal safety. Also, when blowing your blowgun, it's best practice to inhale away from the blowgun mouthpiece before you blow to make sure you don't accidentally inhale a dart. There's been a fair amount of Zen-like information written about blowgun breathing and blowing techniques. And I'll be covering blowing techniques in a separate, more detailed video. But let me leave you with one technique that's possibly the most important tip I have in this video for you. When you blow your blowgun, don't just blow into the mouthpiece, but say ta forcefully into the mouthpiece when you shoot. This pre-compresses the air in your mouth and releases it in one explosive blast that gives you faster dart velocity and a flatter trajectory. This will help you be a lot more consistent in hitting your target, especially under circumstances where you don't know the range to the target, such as during hunting conditions. Now that you know how to blow that blowgun, we're ready to talk about aiming and shooting. Most traditional projectile weapons that you're familiar with, such as rifles, shotguns, and pistols, are aimed by looking directly down the barrel with one dominant eye. Blowguns are obviously very different because you hold the barrel between both eyes so that you can keep your mouth on that mouthpiece and you aim a blowgun with both eyes wide open. And when you aim a blowgun, instead of looking down the barrel with one eye, you see a double image with both eyes open and you want to center the target between the double image of those two barrels that you see. As you center the target between the double image of those two barrels and shoot, if your darts hit low, you aim higher. If your darts hit high, you aim lower. It's as simple as that. And your proficiency with a blowgun is going to depend on your ability to keep the target steadily centered between the two barrels and your ability to shoot and breathe consistently to make sure the dart hits the same place with every shot. Thanks for watching. If you learned something new, please click that like button. Also, upcoming videos are going to cover blowgun hunting, blowgun ballistics, competition target shooting, sights, breathing and blowing techniques, and more detailed videos on the 40 and 50 caliber blowguns and my personal favorites, the 625 caliber big bore blowguns. If any of those topics interest you, go ahead and click that subscribe button as well. Thanks again for watching here at the Blogan channel, and remember, blow responsibly.